Hi, I'm Carly and I'm a student at Iowa State University. In this video, I will be discussing lakes, specifically Meramictic lakes. So this is a prime example of a Meramictic lake. This is Brownie Lake um, in Minnesota. It looks normal, but when looking at specific key parts, one can see the complexities, especially when kind of looking at some cross sections. So here's a cross section of your average lake. Um, and as you can see, experience is mixing all throughout the lake, and this is due to multiple processes, including wind, which can help mix the lake around. So now this is what a Meramictic lake looks like, and one can see the major defining characteristic is the distinct layering in the water column. And there are three notable layers that makes a lake Meramictic. So we have the first layer, the mix aluminum, which is on top. And this is where the wind can move or mix the debris and chemicals. And we'll just simplify it to the mix layer. Um, and then we have the chemocline. Um, and this is where the, there's a transition of the mix layer to the unmixed layer. And the unmixed layer is called the monoluminum. This layer contains uh, high concentrations of solutes and has a high density compared to the mixed layer. And this is all impacted by several key factors like the morphometry, chemical composition, and the biological attributions of the lake. And this will be further on explained. So starting with the morphometry um, the, of the uh, this implies where the lake is positioned with the landscape and the shape of the lake. Um, this will influence like the chemical sources, the biological aspects, the density, and if the lake will be able to mix. So the deeper the lake is, the harder it will be for wind to mix it up. And going off of that, where the lake is located uh, can influence the water chemical sources of the lake. Uh, if the lake has a lower elevation, uh, I'll have different water sources compared to if it sits at a higher elevation. Like down here, we'll probably get more groundwater, and up here, it'll likely just be some rain or precipitation. Which leads us to the next point of chemical compositions of the lake. Um, and here, the chemical composition affects the density of the water column. This will allow for the formation of the different layers and allows them to stay. The unmixed layer down here um, is extremely dense as it contains a high number of chemical solutes. This may be due to several points, but some of the inputs include the groundwater, glacial debris, and biological factors. And speaking of, so the lake is influenced by biological factors, specifically certain species that can change the lake's composition. So living organisms found in lakes will die, like we'll probably have some algae or phytoplankton up here. They'll die and sink down to the bottom of the lake where they will decompose. Um, and their decomposition processes will release solutes into the lake, especially in the unmixed layer down here. Um, this will impact the density and increase it. So all in all, those are the three key parts. And as you can see, it's very interesting to look at in what a Meramitic lit, what a Meramitic lake is. And this is kind of why we are currently doing some research and going on and went on a field expedition exploring four lakes in Atasca State Park. My friends have also made videos explaining the process and what we did in Atasca and the results of this study. Uh, so I definitely recommend checking that out as well as the story map and Wikipedia page, all of which will be linked below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it.